Hello everyone, I'm John Pollock and this is Fight News Now Extra. We're gonna get you caught up on all of the news and then John Ramdeen, Robin Black and myself are gonna take your Twitter questions coming up on today's chat. But up first, it's all of the headlines from the past 24 hours. Dave Meltzer of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter reported this week that the UFC is going in the direction of a Vanderlei Silva Chael Sonnen fight for the August 17th UFC on FS1 debut set for Boston, Massachusetts. Sonnen was teasing retirement immediately after the loss to John Jones last weekend, but did a 180 on UFC tonight this week, stating that he wants to fight Silva and also dropped Rich Franklin's name. Unfortunate news for middleweight Costa Filippu, who's been forced off of the May 18th UFC on FX8 card after suffering a cut in training. Filippu was scheduled to fight Ronaldo Jacare Souza on the Brazilian card, and now Chris Camozzi, who was already scheduled for that card, has been put into the vacant spot, and he comes into this fight with a four-fight win streak. Another fighter off of an upcoming card is welterweight TJ Waldberger, who has been removed from the June 15th UFC 161 card in Winnipeg, where he was to fight Sean Pearson. The UFC announced the change and that Kenny Robertson will be stepping in to fight Pearson on the Facebook preliminary fight. And what is going on with Bellator and Eddie Alvarez? Apparently nothing. Bellator CEO Bjorn Redney states that they were working towards a settlement, but talks have broken down and they expect this one to go to court. Alvarez has publicly stated that there will be no settlement and recently sold one of his investment properties to wait this thing out and is moving to Florida with his family. Alvarez's contract with Bellator ran out last fall and received an offer by the UFC which Bellator had the right to match and the courts are going to decide if Bellator in fact did counter offer and if it was a match. And the Taekwondo Canada Open is now underway in Toronto and as Lily Lazar Green reports Canada is very well represented this year. The 2013 Taekwondo Canada Open is at the Weston Harbour Castle in downtown Toronto. Fight Network was there to check out the action from the best athletes in the world from one of the most exciting martial arts. It's our Canada Open, it's an international event, obviously, Taekwondo. We've got 21 countries here. We're here in Toronto, obviously trying to build up for Pan Am Games. If you look at the level of uh, competitors that are here, you know, this type of event will definitely bring the Canadians the ability to have an international experience right here in uh, Canada. For me, fighting is my life. I was at the, the last Olympics, so uh, I have some, uh, you know, go uh, government uh, found to, to train, just train, no work. Now for us is obviously Pan Am Games. It's it's in a year and a half. It's a huge event, so we want to start to build Taekwondo, not just within our own community, but in the general public as well. If you want to see some of the best in combative sport compete live, the 2013 Taekwondo Canada Open is on all weekend and open to the public at the Western Harbor Castle in downtown Toronto. Welcome back, John Ramdy and Robin Black with us right now. We're going to do something different today. We're going to the Twitter machine here at I am John Pollock, and we've got some questions that we're gonna go through in rapid fire here, guys. First up here is a question from Andy Kraft, who wants to know if you would like to see Frank Mir versus Alistair Overeem next, coming off of Frank Mir's loss to Daniel Cormier and Overeem with that performance against Antonio Silva. Sold, I love it. I think it makes a lot of sense. You have a former Strike Force heavyweight champion versus a former UFC champion. Both guys are in desperate need of a victory. Uh, Frank Mir wants to get the fight down to the ground. Alistair Overeem wants to keep it standing. Clash of styles, perfect. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to be rude to the first guy who t uh, sent us in a question by Twitter, but that's a terrible question. Of course we want to see that fight. These two guys match up beautifully. I want to see Overeem try to keep this thing on the feet and just pound away on Mir, who has shown a bit of a weak chin at times, but see Mir try to take this to the ground and submit the big man. I'm game. Great fight. You talk about weak chin for Frank Mir. Remember, he did go the distance with Roy Nelson, who took out Czech Congo. So, yeah, he's got a weak chin when he's facing absolute monsters. But Frank Mir can definitely take a punch. Yeah. Callum writes, Ian Freeman and Ken Shamrock are fighting in the UK in July. What do you think of this matchup and who are you picking? This is UFC 41, 40, 39, yeah, 2002. Maybe? Yeah, I, I don't know. I think, you know, you got to give props to these guys because they're still willing to get in there 
and square off. You know, yes, yeah, so there's two legends of the sport. Ian Freeman helped pioneer mixed martial arts in England. And of course, Ken Shamrock, we know all the things that he's done in combat sports. So it's kind of a throwback. It's a nostalgic fight. I think some of the other fights on the card make more sense, but you need the, the marquee matchup. And I think, uh, why not? If these guys so, are yeah, willing to Robin, do it. Robin, this is a follow-up to you. Does nostalgia, do you feel, work in MMA? Because this isn't like watching, a, you know, the senior PGA tournament. This is fighting, where it can yeah. become very depressing at times to watch guys who are really trying to still remain uh, physically relevant here. Uh, I think at times it can really be a turnoff to some fans. I think this is going to end up being a pretty good fight, and I see it from the point of view of the fighters. I'm an old man myself, and I still really like fighting. And uh, for these guys to get a chance to go in there and still enjoy what they do against another guy just like themselves, I think it's beautiful for them. But I think, to your point, I think it only really appeals to the hardcore. We'd like it. You know what? We're going to probably enjoy that fight. But whether or not you can find a full arena of people who get much past, hey, Ken Shamrock, I think I know who that guy is. You know, much past that, I don't know if you do from a promoter standpoint. I don't know if it works. But I'm anxious to see it. I'm happy for both those guys. I think you look at it, and again, I'm not trying to compare the two, but just imagine if Mike Tyson and said, you know what, I'm coming out of retirement to fight tomorrow. Ken Shamrock. Well, yeah, sure, to fight yeah. Ken Shamrock. <laughs> <laughs> Loads of people would yeah, tune in to see We never that. got Mike Tyson, Bob <laughs> yeah. Saff. Remember well, that? Yeah, that's yeah. right. That was supposed to happen. Um, but Bono, yeah, big I think, challenge. I think if Mike Tyson was to come out of retirement tomorrow, you'd see lots of people lining up to see this guy fight. So I can understand the appeal from the casual fan standpoint who maybe have never seen Ken Shamrock. They never got a chance yeah. to see him actually compete. So uh, kudos to these guys for taking the fight. Jamie Donovan writes, with the Fox Sports 1 card being hyped as a big show, do you think they go with George St. Pierre, Johnny Hendricks? If not, what fight? They've obviously said they want a big card there to, for the launch of Fox Sports 1 in Boston. Uh, do you think that they'd put GSP on no. TV? I don't think so. No, I, I, yeah. the reason why I say that is because George fights so intelligently. The guy is one of the pound-for-pound -pound best in the world because he plays his game perfectly. But how does it translate on television? Not necessarily yeah. the best. And what the UFC wants for network TV is action fighters, fighters that are willing Conor to go McGregor. out there. Conor McGregor. Yeah, Conor McGregor, honest. exactly. A guy like this that's willing to go out there, take a couple of punches, take his lumps. And I'm not saying that George doesn't take his lumps, but you know he doesn't really put himself in harm's way. A guy like Vanderlei Silva, for example, made for network hey, television. How about Vanderlei Silva versus Chael Sonnen? I don't know if it's too soon, but it makes sense for that card. But also, with GSP on TV, man, that's way too much money to give up. Like, GSP just rakes in cash for everybody involved. And you, you also have to pay him a lot. And yeah. to yeah. justify that, giving away a fight on TV with no pay-per-view revenue, I don't think that's a smart move. I like Chael Sonnen and Vanderlei Silva. Yeah. That sure. makes a ton of sense. Tristan Davis, are there any sellable fights at light heavyweight for John Jones right now before he moves up to heavyweight? Yeah, I, I think a uh, fight between between John Jones and Daniel Cormier yep. makes sense because number one, Daniel Cormier's teammate and good friend Cain Velasquez is the current UFC heavyweight champion. This guy is a decorated wrestler, possibly the best wrestler at 205 pounds that John Jones has ever faced. You can argue that yeah, Chael Sonnen was a decorated wrestler and Rashad Evans was a decorated wrestler, but I think Dan good. Daniel Cormier is a legit guy with legit knockout power, and I think this fight absolutely sells itself. Uh, you talk about the backstory of Daniel Cormier losing a child, being the captain of the Olympic wrestling team. Uh, this guy is a guy the UFC can get behind, and I think he will get legions of fans once they see who this guy really is. Can, can I have a high five on sure. that? Yeah. Woo! yeah, because that's the only fight that makes sense. Gustafson's cool. I'd love to see Gustafson fight a ton. I'm a fan, but there's him against John Jones. He's just sort of a, a slightly less developed version of the same guy. Daniel Cormier is the only fight right now that makes sense at 205. That or Dan if you're Daniel Cormier, do you want to fight first at 205? Before the like he said he would like that, but if you're offered a title shot, hard to say no. Take to the that. title Take fight. Take it when you get Take it. Take it. There you go. Thank you to your questions. Send them to at I am John Pollock, and maybe we will do this again. There is more of Fight News Now Extra coming at you.